Olá, meus amigos. Hello, my friends. Que Deus abençoe a todos. May God bless you all. All you whom have followed this live on Instagram who are interested in learning the Word of God, interested in learning the Word of God. There are those who are curious. There are those who come to criticize, to censor, to comment subjects with ha which have nothing to do with the subject here with this live which we do it is to try to try and help people who thirst and hunger for righteousness to try and quench their thirst to quench their spiritual needs because I know that people have needs to hear the word of God because it is the word of God which people are interested in knowing then they have then they are chosen by God to be cleansed by the word to be purified by the word that they may give fruit so to these people who are interested These are the ones whom we are working with and praise God because He has given us direction, He has taught through His Word how we can be free from evil, how we can guarantee our salvation, how we can preserve our salvation which is the most precious thing on earth. It is our salvation, but our salvation depends on faith. The authentic faith, the intelligent faith, the faith which is supported on the Word of God, which is supported on the sacred scriptures. So when a person supports himself on the Word of God and practices and obeys and serves, he is preserving his soul for an encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, speaking about Psalm 73, in fact, Psalm 73, it is a psalm which is very strong, very strong, because the one who speaks was a man of God, a man of God. This man of God He mentions three things. Pay attention right in the beginning. He says, in regards to God. In regards to God, he says, Truly, God is good. So he knew that God was good, awesome, magnificent. Excellent towards Israel. Later, he says, to such as are pure in heart. Pure in heart are those people who have a clean and cleansed and purified conscience. They are in peace with God. These are the pure in heart. Then he speaks of himself. Personally, his opinion, his situation, his own testimony, his own confession. He says, But as for me, now he speaks of himself, But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My feet had almost stumbled. So we see that he was a man of God. Asaph was a man of God, a man of faith, a man who knew God, God-fearing. But, still being a God-fearing man, still, as he says, 
My feet had almost stumbled. Why? Meaning, he was a man of God, a prophet. He reaches the point of confessing that his feet almost stumbled. It's because it was very strong, very strong. My feet almost stumbled. Why did they almost stumble? Why? He says, My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. This is the biggest problem of people, of the people run the risk of, you know, those who are of God, God-fearing, they run this risk. Because though they are of God, a person who is of God, I am baptized with the Holy Spirit, I am of God, I am faithful in the church, etc., etc., etc. Praise God. But this sensation, which the person has of assurance, security, and because they don't take care, they don't guard, they are not attentive in regards to their own lives, their salvation, guarding their lives, watching. So those people who, for a reason, have the Holy Spirit, they are God-fearing, they are of God, but they are living, they are living problems and situations of misery, unemployment, health problems, secular problems. Normally, people ask themselves, but why? I serve God, but why is it like this? If I am a servant of God, why has my husband left me? If I am a servant of God, my wife abandoned me. How come? If I am a servant of God, why am I sick? If I am a servant of God, why am I unemployed? What is happening? Did God forget me? Am I lost? Am I alone? So the devil works on this. The devil, he does the following. Pay attention. He blows thoughts to the one who are firm on the rock. He tempted Jesus, the Lord Jesus himself. Do you not think he will tempt the prophets, the men of God, the servants of God? Will he not tempt them? Of course he will. That is why Jesus said, watch and pray. First watch, then pray. So this is the situation of many believers in the Lord Jesus who allow themselves to be led, to be taken by the word. The devil comes and blows these thoughts. Come on, you're of God, you're upright. You are a good person, you're honest, you're this, you're that. So the devil gets people, people who are close to you to use the speech. Look, you are of God. Why is this happening? The devil is blowing these thoughts. The devil is inciting you to evaluate your life, weigh your life, weigh your thoughts, weigh the problems which you are facing and your faith. Your faithfulness in the church, for example. So the devil is vomiting everything which he can to incite you who are of God, that person who fears God, to be against God, to be against God, as he did with Job. And then many people fall because many people 
become worried, oh, why this, why that? Why am I suffering like this? But come on, I'm a servant of God. I have peace. I live in peace with God. I live in peace with my conscience. Come on, God is with me. I know that He is with me. If my brother is prospering, if the other is getting rich, that's their problem with God. If God found it well for them to be rich, amen, I have nothing to do with this. That's His problem. My salvation is mine. It's personal, individual. I need to take care of myself. Of course, if I can help those who are fallen, I'm going to do that. But I won't. Having greedy eyes, being jealous of those who are prospering, those who are getting rich, who are even bad and evil, perverse, witty people. I have nothing with this. And just as an example, in my youth, after I had my encounter with God, I took care of my salvation. Constantly, I would take care of myself because I wanted to give to God. I would think, what could I offer to God? How could I save other people? How can I be useful to God? If I see a fallen bishop or pastor prostrate with problems, if there were problems within the churches, which I saw in the church which I started in, there were many problems, but I wasn't bothered with the problems. That's their problems. They need to solve it. I have nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. But there are many believers who show that their heart is not clean. Why? Because they carry that malice. They carry that spirit of malice, of always wanting and always gossiping. That's it, people. Who keep having that desire to know what is happening in the lives of the others, what is happening, what is this one doing, what is the other one doing. This intention is malicious, it's iniquity. So people who have this curiosity to know what is happening in the lives of others, these people, the devil know. If they are of God, the devil will try to lead them to stumble in faith because he will shake them, saying, look, so-and-so got money, so-and-so has a lover, has this and that. Look, that person is prospering, they have money. As if he would say, what about your God? Where is he who doesn't help you? Are you not so faithful to him? So this type of person certainly always existed. Existed in the ministry of the Lord Jesus himself. Because, do you remember the story of Martha and Mary? Martha and Mary, just a marvelous example. When Jesus got to their house and Martha wanted to organize everything, to clean, to take care of the guests, many guests, and she was very worried in presenting a clean house and all of that. But not Maria. Maria was at the feet of Jesus. She wanted to hear the Lord Jesus. She wasn't worried with the exterior, but she was worried with her interior. And this is the situation we are speaking of. Not Martha. She was worried with many things and Jesus said to her. Then she came to complain with the Lord. Look, she came to complain. Lord, come on. Does it not bother you that my sister is still there at your feet and I'm here serving everyone? Come on. Wait a second, this is not right. Then that word came, injustice. The evil are always claiming and pointing to injustice. The evil always speak of injustices. The devil always shows that they're being treated unjustly. 
Why? Because one looks to the other. Mary was looking to herself. Martha was looking around, looking at the exterior. And perhaps you who is watching me right now is committing this big mistake. You're faithful to God. But you look to others. How can this be? How can you look to God at the same time look to the lives of others? It's not possible. You need to look at yourself. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care and watch over yourself. Your salvation, my friend, is the most precious thing. We spoke about this. It's almost 8 billion human beings. How many people are saved in this world? I will tell to you that in sincerity, in my diagnosis, I don't even believe there's 10% of people saved in this world. Come on, Bishop, this is very pessimistic of you. No, it's not pessimistic. No, I see it in the churches. I have seen this throughout the world. We have received believers from other churches, other denominations, people who are fallen, pastors, people, reverends, so many fallen, so many prostrate, so many who stumbled along the way with their situations, etc. And I keep thinking, this is sad, a sad image of your church. The overall image of the church is fallen. Why? Because the members of the churches are looking to each other. Imagine if the right hand kept looking to the left hand. Imagine if in my body there was these bad eyes from the left hand to the right hand and vice versa. Imagine if my right leg would find that it is working more than the left leg. It's not possible. You cannot look to others, my friend. If you look to others, it's in a good sense, in wanting to save, to save, to help, to give them a word, but in the sense of preserving your own life, preserving your salvation. It's so precious, but so precious that Jesus said, few are saved, few. He said, the gate is narrow. The way is tight. So see how the situation is. Few enter. Few enter. Jesus said this. And prophet Asaph, he says, My feet nearly slipped. Almost stumbled on my steps, for I was envious. He almost slipped, and how many are fallen because of jealousy? Now he confesses, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And he said more, for there are no pangs in their death. They have the best doctors, the best assistants, but they are unbelievers. He says, there are no pangs in their death, the death of the wicked, but their strength is firm. He thought like this, the physical strength. And he says, they are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as a necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. You know those people who like to confess their evil deeds. Thieves have these habits to confess how cruel they were, how cruel they were in the death of many people, enemies, adversaries, and etc. So many people carry this luxury, this pride of bring evil, perverse, and apparently they are good. In their eyes, 
Now the Prophet says, their eyes bulge with abundance. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than the heart could wish. Meaning, he speaks, he reports that the life of the wicked, the rich, those who do evil, those who are against God, they still prosper. They still live a good life. And he thought, come on, this is not right. In other words, he's saying it's not right. I'm faithful to you. I'm a person who harms no one. I'm a person who has been faithful, loyal in my faith. But I'm jealous of them because they have the best and I have the worst. No, my friend, don't think like this. Never, ever, at any moment, think like this. You don't know what the rich go through. The riches of the rich does not let them sleep at night. They have no peace. Did you know that? The riches of the rich does not allow them to live in peace. Does not leave them in peace. Because, as I mentioned previously, that the gang leader, when he slept, he had an army around him to protect his sleep because he was afraid. When he slept, he would sleep with afraid. He would sleep with the machine gun. But he, was, he slept afraid. He had everything, money, women. He had everything. So this is the situation of the wicked. No wicked, no sinner. No matter the size of the glory, the luxury in this world, they, they don't have peace. Unless they have the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Other than that, it's impossible. When we have the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, what matters? The rest doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if those in the others are good and we're not in a good condition. It doesn't matter. We don't need to worry with this. Our greatest worry is to maintain a pure heart, which is the great vigilance which we need to have. So I need to watch my heart, my thoughts. I need to watch my life, guarding my life, to not allow it to slip, to not lose it in any manner. Because I use a popular saying, which might serve for you. I was saved 57 years ago. I am saved. Praise God. I am saved today. If I die today, this moment, praise God, I will go happy. And I will be saved if I remain faithful, loyal to the end. So I was saved, I am saved, and I will be saved if I remain faithful to the end. Use this idea for you not to look at others. You need to look to yourself. Don't do as Martha did, who was censored by Jesus. Jesus said, you walk anxious, word with many things. Mary chose the good part. You worry with many things and you keep looking at the lives of people. Look to yourself. Keep yourself. This is the secret of salvation. I was, I am, and I will be saved if I remain faithful to the end. So, each day which I overcome, each day which I reach and I remain in salvation, it's a glory to Him. Tomorrow, God will give me, but I will not worry with those who fall on my right or on my left because I need to take care of my salvation. 
I won't change or exchange it for anything. Not even for family or work, for nothing in this world. Nothing, nothing, nothing. My salvation is untouchable. That's why I take care of it. I guard it with all my strength of my heart. I protect it with everything which God gives me that it may be saved. So don't look at others. Look to yourself. Don't be Martha. Be Mary. Mary chose the good part. And this and this will not be taken from her. And that is what I keep. To choose this good part, this, we call it to fear the Lord. When we fear God, we guard our salvation. Alright? Tomorrow we'll speak more. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.